Hey everybody, it's so great to have you back in the High Gatsby studio. Today, I want to tell you a story about something that happened to me when I was a little girl. My mom loved to read to me and my brother and sister. She would say, go pick out your favorite books and bring them to me. And we would, and it seemed like we always picked out the same books. There was a certain book that had great pictures and the stories were always funny and fun to listen to. We would bring her these books and she would say, oh no, I am going to get so tongue-tied reading these. But she would read them to us anyway. The books were by an author by the name of Theodore Geisel. But on the outside of the book, it didn't say that the author was Theodore Geisel. It said that the author was Dr. Seuss. And have I got a story for you. Theodore Geisel was born in 1904 in Springfield, Massachusetts. He had an older sister and he had sweet, loving parents. His father's name was also Theodore, so they called little Theodore Ted. Are any of you named after one of your parents? Ted had a fun childhood. He loved playing outside, especially with his three-legged dog, and he had a huge imagination. He loved to play dress up. Ted's family was quite known in the town of Springfield. His father worked in the family brewery, and his mother worked in her family's bakery. One of Ted's fondest memories was at night, when his mother would put he and his sister to bed. She would sing them to sleep and she would sing the names of the pies that they sold in the bakery. It probably went something like this. Apple, mint, lemon, peach, apricot, and pineapple, blueberry, coconut, custard, and squash. Oh, I cannot imagine a squash pie. She had a certain way of singing the names of those pies, and Ted loved hearing the rhythm of her voice. Another thing that Ted loved to do was go to the zoo. His family went to the zoo all the time because his father had an honorary position at the zoo. Ted and his sister Marnie got to go into all the different areas of the zoo, even the parts where regular people weren't allowed to go. Ted would often take paper and pencil and he would draw the different animals that he saw there. And because Ted had a huge imagination, sometimes he would draw different parts of animals and put them on different other animals to make his own very unique and crazy looking animal. Ted graduated from high school and he wound up going to Dartmouth College. And while he was there, he found out that they had a very cool newspaper. The newspaper was called the Jack-O-Lantern. And they loved to put funny, silly, crazy stories, crazy cartoons, funny poems in it. And this was right down Ted's alley. He loved to write silly stories, and he especially loved to draw silly pictures. He spent a lot of time at the newspaper, and he was always submitting articles to it. One night, several of his friends were hanging out with him in the dorm, and they did something they weren't supposed to do. They were drinking alcohol, and at this time, alcohol was forbidden. Well, the dean of the school found out and told Ted in order to be punished, he was no longer going to be able to do articles for the Jack-O-Lantern newspaper. Oh, Ted was so disappointed. He loved that newspaper. He had all these stories and cartoons and pictures going on in his head, and he just had to get them on paper. And so he came up with a plan. He submitted several stories, several poems, and several cartoons to the newspaper, but he didn't sign his name to it. Instead, he used what they call a pseudonym. It's a made-up name. The pseudonym that he used on his works that he submitted was the maiden name of his mother. That means the last name she had before she got married. It was also his middle name. His name was Theodore Seuss Geisel. 
And so he began to sign all of his artwork and his articles with the name Seuss. In time, he began to add the word doctor, D-R dot, to the front of his name, Dr. Seuss. The dean of the school never found out that it was actually Ted submitting these pieces of artwork and these articles to the newspaper. And Ted began to kind of like the way it looked, Dr. Seuss. It sounded so professional. After Ted graduated, he went to Europe for a while to study. And while he was there, there was this new art movement that was going on. It was called surrealism. Surreal. To me, that almost sounds like I'm saying the word so real. But this art movement was the opposite of so real. It was not so real. Artists were drawing pictures of things that they would see in their dreams, things that didn't look quite right. But you could tell what they were. For instance, if there was a, a hill, instead of just drawing a hill, they would draw a very, very steep hill that went up and straight down. If they were going to draw a house, they might draw the house crooked. If they were going to draw an animal, they would draw it all mixed up with different body parts. That sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? That's what Ted did when he would visit the zoo as a kid. He loved this new art movement. And so he decided that he would come back to New York and do cartooning full time with a somewhat surreal or not so real look to it. While he was in New York, he wrote several articles and drew a lot of cartoons and did illustrations and several very prominent magazines picked up his work. He was able to make a little bit of money. Sometimes the adults that read his cartoons didn't necessarily appreciate the way that the surreal art was done, but it seemed that younger people, children, loved it. Perhaps he should write a children's book. And so he set out to do just that. He wrote a book about kind of what his imagination was like as a kid. And he called it, And to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. The book is about a little boy who is walking to school and it's the things that he sees on the way. The things aren't necessarily real. There are things that he conjures up in his imagination. When he finished writing the story and doing the illustrations, the picture for the very cute and funny book, he began to send it off to publishers to see if they would make copies of it and sell it. He sent this book to many, many publishers and he continued to get rejection letters. One day, a letter came in the mailbox from the latest publisher that he had asked if they wanted to sell his book. He thought, maybe this is the one. He opened up the letter, and when he saw what was written, he was very sad. It was yet again another rejection letter. He was so disappointed, he, he just had to go for a walk. He grabbed his book, and he headed out the door. As he's walking down the street, he sees a trash can up on the corner and he decides that he's just going to throw the book in the trash. But right before he got to the trash can, he saw a friend. It was a classmate that he had not seen in many, many years. The classmate asked him, how are you doing, Ted? How are things going for you with your illustrations and your articles? And Ted began to tell him the struggles he was having getting his book published. Well, it just so happened that this friend had just gotten hired on with Vanguard Press. It was a publishing company. And he said, is that the book, the book you have in your hand? Is, is that the one that nobody wants to publish for you? And Ted told him, yes, it is. In fact, I think I'm just going to throw it away. And his friend said, oh, before you do that, let me take a look at it. Let me see what we can do. When the friend read the book, he said, Ted, I love this. I think that Vanguard would love to publish this book for you. And so they went immediately to his office and Ted signed a contract. Well, the book did okay. People tended to like the book. And so he decided that he would write more. He began to write children's books and illustrate them himself. 
If he didn't illustrate the book, he wouldn't sign his name Dr. Seuss. He would sign it Theo Lesig. If you look closely, the last name Lesig is Geisel written backwards. Ted did okay with his illustrations with some of his children's books, with his advertisements, but it wasn't until 20 years later when a publisher came to him and asked him if he would write a book for them to publish. It was going to be difficult though. The publisher told him that he was so tired of children's books being boring. You see, there was a list of words that children were supposed to memorize and the books that the authors wrote using those words on the list were just not fun to read at all. This publisher wanted to see if Dr. Seuss and all of his crazy imagination could use these words and come up with a book that encouraged children to want to read. Ted said he would give it a try. He got the list of words. There were 348 words that children who were just beginning to read were supposed to have memorized. He began to look at all these words to see if he could somehow come up with a story using those words. He looked at those words and looked at those words. He put them in all different order, trying to come up with an idea. He worked on it for months and months. He just wasn't coming up with anything. And then he happened to see two words that rhymed. The words were cat and hat. And he thought, perhaps I can use those words with these other words and come up with something. And you know what the name of the book was? The Cat in the Hat. He wrote this story about a cat who showed up on a very rainy day to two children who could not go out and play. Unfortunately, this cat began to wreak havoc in the house, even so much that the children's pet fish got quite upset with him being there. And then the cat introduced a thing one and a thing two, and they also wreaked havoc on the house. When the book was finished, he gave it to the publisher. And when the publisher read it, oh, he loved it. They printed it and it was a huge success. Children loved the book about the cat and the hat. And if they had memorized some of those 348 words, they were able to read it themselves. Another publisher came to Ted and said, we loved what you did with the cat and the hat, but I want to make a bet with you. I'm going to bet you $50 that you cannot come up with a book that uses 50 of the same words or less. Well, Ted wanted to take that bet. And so he began to work on a second book, a book that only used the same 50 words over and over again. When he was finished with the book and he gave it to that publisher, the publisher had to pay him $50 on that bet because the book was fabulous. The name of that book was Green Eggs and Ham. And as you know, if you've read the book, Sam, does not like green eggs and ham. Overnight, Dr. Seuss was becoming famous. Households with children in them all wanted to buy Dr. Seuss books. I know in my home, we bought quite a few of them. And there was one that was my particular favorite. It was an ABC book. I think the reason I liked it so much was this was the book I was telling you about that my mom would get all tongue twisted when she read it to us. And of course, the characters that Dr. Seuss used for his illustrations were so much fun to look at. I think this is considered my favorite page. It reads, Big E, Little E. What begins with E? Ear, egg, elephant. E, E, E. Big F, little F, what begins with F? Four fluffy feathers on a fiffer feffer feff. Big G, little G, what begins with G? Goat and goo goo goggles, G, G, G. (laughs) I still love reading parts of that book. Ted continued to write fabulous books. And in his books, 
He wanted to teach children a lesson, a lesson to live by. So he came up with Horton. Horton always showed kindness and perseverance. And he wrote a book called The Lorax, and it taught children to take care of the environment. He wrote about the Grinch that stole Christmas. Ted said that he had hit a kind of low point in his life where Christmas really didn't seem all that important anymore. It was all about gifts and packages and sometimes even selfishness. So with this book, he was able to show that Christmas was a lot more than just gifts. And then the very last book that Ted ever wrote was in 1990, just a year before he died. It's probably been one of his best sellers after The Cat in the Hat, and it's called Oh, the Places You Will Go. It's a story of a send-off, whether a child is starting kindergarten or starting college. It's a story about finding your success from within. In 1991, at the age of 87, Theodore Seuss Geisel, also known as Dr. Seuss, died of cancer. He had written over 40 children's books. He will forever be one of my favorite authors and illustrators, and I hope he is one of your favorites too. I want you to join me the rest of the week as we look closer at some of Dr. Seuss's books and especially his illustrations. And I'm hoping that you'll join me over at the art table and perhaps we can draw some of his famous illustrations together. Thanks again for joining me. And I want you to remember to stay safe and stay healthy.